Hello and welcome. In today's tutorial, I want to share with you how to make this face mask. This is a fantastic beginner's project as you only really need to know how to do a chain stitch, a single crochet and a half double crochet. This is also a great project for those windy days where you do want to cover your face without giving the impression that you're sick. Um, I often find that if I'm wearing a white mask like this, while it protects my face, everybody seems to think that I'm sick or they give me that weird look. So I, I'm going to probably make a few of these uh, today to wear for the winter as well as during this time of social distancing. I don't, this particular mask is made from a cotton yarn that I had left over. Uh, again, about this much was used, I believe. And the pattern actually came with a lining portion. So if you do want to add that for to, I don't know, have a filter inserted or just for, as an added protection, you will need some scraps of fabric about 15 to 12 centimeters wide. I can give you the measurements later on if you want and I can list that as well uh, later on. So I don't have any more cotton yarn as I said so I am going to use some regular acrylic yarn. This shimmery one I think is particularly a good candidate especially for winter times and it adds a nice pop of color to my life right now. Um, this is three ply, I believe. It's a DK yarn, it's a, it's a thinner yarn. And because we're using a three millimeter hook, um, I wouldn't use anything thicker than a DK three ply yarn, which is a thinner version and it's softer as well. The pattern is really, really easy and you can adjust it to any size. So if you'd end up using something like a chunky wool like this, you can definitely adjust it to fit the size that you need. Uh, but for the purposes of this, this tutorial, I am going to use a three millimeter hook and a Vienna's Choice. I forgot what the name of the yarn is, but I'm going to use this live red yarn to make this mask. So the first thing we're going to do, I just want to show you how, what, how this is composed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the bottom row and then we're going to work up this way. So this is called working in rows, like we're going back and forth like a typewriter. And then once we reach here, we're going to go there, make a chain, come around and make another chain. And that is the gist of how the pattern is. So you can adjust it to the face size, I guess, that it, it, it is intended to fit. Now, the way we're going to get started is you're going to chain the length of your mask, which is this portion with the, the strap. So we're going to chain this bit. I found that 40 chains is sufficient uh, to cover my face or the width of my face. And when I say that, I mean like middle of my cheek to middle of my other cheek is covered by 40 chains. Just a quick review of chain. We're going to make a quick slip knot like so. Holding the tail end, I'm going to pull tight so the slip doesn't get loose. I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop. I'm going to hold the loop I just made, yarn over, pull through the loop. So that's one chain, two chain, one chain at the bottom, the second at the chain. So one, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. Notice that I am moving the hook in a kind of twisty manner. So to ensure that all of, I wonder if you can see it, all of my yarn is caught. Whoop. But don't lose it. Let's do that again. You also want to make sure all of your pieces are on the right side. 
I mean, on the hook together and none of that twisting is happening. This is a little bit tricky because there's like a glittery part to it, but you'll get used to that sort of thing as you crochet ex projects increase and you've done it for a little while. So I totally forgot my count, but we can end that situation by counting again. Now, every little chain that you make will look like a braid. So we're just counting the braid. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. Now, every time when you work in that typewriter fashion, you want to, you typically will raise the height of your stitch by chaining the corresponding amount. So for a single crochet, there's typically one or two sometimes depending on the pattern of uh, the designer's pattern. In this instance, we are just going to add one extra stitch. So we have 40 now. I'm going to chain another one, 41. Because we're going to start single crocheting backwards and to make sure that we keep the 40 stitches going, I've just made another stitch the reason being this might get a little bit complicated for you if you're especially if you're new the reason being we do not count the first stitch closest to the hook we always do it from the second one because this is not easy to crochet through so we always like to count the second one in order for us to have 40 stitches starting from the second one we need to have one extra to make sure that we have the 40 stitches along. I don't think that made sense, but I hope you did or you kind of get the gist of it. Um, so now we're going to single stitch back, second stitch from the hook, like so. And we're going to do it nine times, just as a review. I'm going to show you. You're going to poke through the loop that you're going through, yarn over, pull through. I'm going to hold both of my loops, yarn over, and pull through. You are poking literally into the middle of the little braids that we've made. So, and we're gonna do this nine times. Poke through, yarn over, pull through. Poke through, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over and pull through. Poke through, yarn over. The yarning over always happens from back to front. In, back to front, pull through, yarn over and pull through. In, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Now to count the stitches that you made, you still count the braids. Obviously it's going the other way, but it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to make one more. And then, so we made nine single stitches and then we're going to make 22 half double crochets. A half double crochet is like a stitch between a single stitch and a double stitch. And it looks like this. Poke through, yarn over, pull, oh, sorry. Yarn over, so there's a yarning over before you go into the hole. You go in, pull through. So now you have three, and you yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, poke through, yarn over, yarn over and pull through now right now there's some kind of thing sticking there and i can guarantee it's because one of the strings are caught that is so i suppose there just undo it and try it again because you want to have this sort of movement on your stitches so yarn over poke through pull through yarn over and that's a half double crochet and you're gonna do 22 of them so I am almost at 
22. Now, I actually lost count, so what I am going to do is start counting again. Now, you can tell, kind of, where the half double crochet started because a single crochet will have a V, like so, and a double crochet will have a V and a bar. This one is not showing, but you see there's a V and a bar and another bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two, half double crochet, and then we should have nine single nine stitches left for our last nine crochet. So two, four, six, eight, ooh, I have ten. Did I not count this properly? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh. Try to keep your tension together. I think what happened is two, four, six, eight, nine. So that is actually a single crochet. So then I do have to make another one. And then now we should have nine stitches left. Two, four, six, eight, nine for our last nine single crochets. Now, as you can see, that could be a really time consuming thing, especially if you're working on a larger project um, to always be counting. Like we only had 22 stitches, I mean 40 stitches to count and divide in. And sometimes when you're making shoes or like slippers or something, you're looking at 60, 70 stitches and it is tedious and time consuming to stitch them all. So I'm going to show you a different way to make your life easier, not have to count too much. You will have to count at least once though. So now we're at the very end of our last stitch. Now, when we turn from here, the first row to here, we chain one. This, this time, we're not going to start with a chain one because what I want to achieve, what we want to achieve here is kind of a tapered effect that we have going on. This will make it a little bit more snug on your face. So we are going to continue stitching without creating the height. So just for your reference, this is what happens when you don't chain one on the side. It kind of tapers and tightens on the side, but that is exactly what we want to do. So it's kind of stuck to our face. So when I turn my work, you have your tail here. Yes. And you turn this way so that you can continue to stitch in that direction. In my case, I'm right-handed. Uh, so I'm going to be continuing my stitches to the left. If you're left, left-handed you'll be continuing your stitches to the right so here my first stitch would be this one where the hook came out of so I'm gonna stitch one and then I'm gonna go through both loops of my braid there two whoops three four five, six, seven, oops, eight, nine. Now in case I lose my count or whatever have you in the future, I am going to place a stitch marker there so that I don't have to keep counting. So this is going to mark the last single stitch I make. Now I made this stitch marker so you may not have it available to you, but you can get one of these, which is a knitting stitch marker, I believe. 
or if you don't even have that you can use a bobby pin and a bobby pin works really really well you just you will just mark it by putting through both or you can just put through one either way whatever you have lying around to mark the last single stitch or beginning of your half double crochets be fine so now the pattern is nine single stitches half double crochet 22 half double crochet nine single stitches so in that instance i could easily mark where i'll use a bobby pin just for you um where my next set of single stitches will start so this would be one two three four five six seven eight whoop, shit i mean oops two four six eight nine so this is where my next single stitch will start so i could just half double crochet here without having to count i'm just going to count it to make sure two four six eight ten two four six eight ten and two and the third one is where my single stitches will start um as i am doing this I just want to show you that you are going to be doing this frequently so don't worry if you're not stitching as fast as I am because I've been doing this for a little bit of much longer than you have if, especially if you're new um, but also I just want to, oh, that's what I forgot what I was going to mention. And then it just came back to me. So the pattern is nine single stitches, 22 half double crochet and nine single stitches. The way, if you're making this for somebody, <clears throat> you, the half double crochets here is the area that is bumpy like this. So if you are going to adjust it, um, make sure let's say you need you needed 50 stitches you want to kind of make sure fold it in half and have about nine or ten you just want this area to stop where your end of your mouth kind of lies so you can adjust the pattern uh, to the side that you need to just based on the fact that the half double crochet is where the rise will happen and the last nine or so stitches here is what what gets snugly attached to your face. Now, this ha having said that, that's the end of the pattern. Uh, you're going for myself. You're going to. I did eighteen rows of this. You can do as much as you want, but I found for my my face, eighteen rows of the this pattern worked out really really well. And it covered exactly right under my nostrils so well sorry right where my bump of my nose is so it worked out really well for me uh, but you can obviously extend it further and cover your entire nose whatever have you so i'm gonna go off camera and make my 18 rounds rows and then i will be back to show you the rest i forgot to show you a couple of things before i sent away so i thought i'd come back anyways to show that to you so as as we i mentioned i put two stitch markers here to mark where my single stitches start um one thing you need to remember to do is because i used to forget to do this all the time so i just did my last half double crochet and this is where my single stitch starts i'm going to take my stitch marker off i'm going to do a single stitch this is the important part. You have to remember to put the stitch marker back. Otherwise, even if you do one more, you won't, <clears throat> it, it will not help you. You might forget, you might get distracted. So put it back right away. And remember that, to, oh, and remember rather you mark the beginning of the single stitch so in my case where my stitch markers are is my first single stitch crochet starts so where that is is a single stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine is what i have uh, you might find it easier to mark where the half double crochet starts and half double crochet ends and that might work just fine 
as you move through the rows, you will find that it's a little bit more challenging to find the last stitch. The last, you need to make the last stitch so that your edges are straight. If you miss it, it will look like this. This is the edges you will have. And the whole mask will not be a mask. It will be a flag or a bad bunting. It would just taper into a triangle. You want to avoid that. And it is a little bit challenging to find. So it might even help you to put another elastic to mark where that is um, as you do it. So, so you would have a marker on you would have essentially four markers, one on this end and one on this end. But if you look closely here, it's not focusing. This V is still there and that is your last stitch. So I'm going to, it's a little, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get both of your, your hooks through both, but just take your time. Make sure you have both of your V's on your hook. Yarn over, pull through. Again, if you're a beginner, it might be a little bit easier to put a marker in it. So then that was my last stitch. You will put a marker at the very last stitch. You would turn. Oh, sorry, you wouldn't put a marker there. You would turn. You would make your first single stitch like so carefully and then you would mark your first single stitch so that you know that stitch has to be done and then you would do the row and then same thing on that side wherever your first single crochet is which is this one right there you would mark it so that you have one two, three, four markers to help you through the process. So if you happen to forget how many rows you've done, which happens to be all the time for me, there, there is a quick and easy way to count this. Uh, I typically work in rounds and I make dolls. So it's fairly easy for me to recognize where my, where my rows are or rounds are. Uh, this is one round, one round, one round, etc. right? But when you're working in a type, ma type fashion, they don't look the same. Whereas this is uniform. You, you look at it, it looks exactly the same with each other. Whereas when you're working in a typewriter fashion or in, in rows like this, you can't tell where which one is which like it's harder for me to count which one is which round okay the ease there's a lot of different ways to count it but the easiest way for me is if you look if you once you get to a certain point you will notice that there is a bumpy ridge this is a bumpy ridge flatter bumpy flat bumpy flat the bumpy ridge happens every other row i believe so Essentially, that will be second row. So every second row, you will have a bumpiness. So in mine, I will show you on mine because it might be easier to understand. So this is my foundation chain here. And this is my bumpy round two. So it'd be two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, I'm holding it upside down. So it's weird. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and this is my eleventh coming, right? So that is how I count it. Um, you, the foundation chain is still here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'll be doing. Where's my chain? Thir my fourteenth up here because of the thirteenth. This is half of that bump. So, isn't this nice? This is going to be so nice in the winter. Like this one looks a little different because I've gone around and single stitched around it, but it said it still has that foundation chain row of chains there. And then two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight. And then there's another set of single stitches here, which looks like half of that ridge that we've got going here. So that's 19. I hope that makes sense. Either way, 
now I'm gonna let you go and do the 18 rows and um, measure it against your face you know maybe you have longer face than I define it's fairly round so you can stitch as much as you need but I'm gonna go ahead and finish my rounds and then I'll be back to show you how to finish it off okay so I have finished my 18 rows you can see here two four six eight ten two four six eight now because they look kind of similar right now you might be inclined to count this way two four six eight ten two four six eight ten now if you do it from back sides it will look like there's 20. remember that when you're counting you have the foundation chain so that is the right side up and that is where you need to count if you count from the back end this is going to be a little bit short on your face because you'll be missing two rows because according to the back side i have 20 rows i also forgot to mention if you do tend to um stitch a little bit on the looser side then try to make this as tight a little bit on the tighter side um you want to stitch a little bit tighter simply because you don't want any layer to go through easily having said that you are going to have a backing like this so that would help you with the airflow and and for protection of course now I've finished my last single stitch there. So now what I'm going to do is make the side band here. Um, initially the original design called for, I believe she chained 35 or 36 or something like that. I found that to be really, really short because I have a fairly round face, kind of like the full moon sort of deal so <laughs> I found personally for myself 45 chains were um, sufficient so without doing anything from this point so that was my last single stitch I'm going to chain 45 three four five Thirty, five, six, seven, eight, whoop, nine, ten, forty, one, two, three, four, five. Now, when you have all your forty-five stitches, you're going to bring it around. Make sure it doesn't twist and turn, although it doesn't really necessarily matter for this project because it's just a yarn. You're going to stitch it directly into the first hole. This is a, your foundation chain and the first stitch you made and there will be a gaping hole there where the tail area is. So you're going to slip stitch it there like so. And what I like to do is I'm going to try this on my face to ensure that it fits. Oh, it's so nice okay and then with the slip stitch we've attached it there and then I'm just going to single stitch all across again I'm not going to give it that extra height or anything because we're just doing this for the edging purposes and I like to stitch my ends into the work body of work I'm doing so all I all I do is I hold the tail end and I stitch along it can be a little bit tricky in the first couple of rounds but uh, you just have to do it slowly and make sure you go through both yarns I think that's what's important so here I'm going through my loop here and then I still have my tail end on top 
yarn over, pull through, yarn over. You're going to go single stitching all across here. Chain whatever you need. Single cross all the way here and then slip stitch to the end and then you're going to fasten off. If you don't know how to fasten off, I will show you how to fasten off quickly. But first, let me go ahead and finish this and then I'll be back. Alrighty, so what I've done is I went, so I started from here. I made the 45 chains and then I went across, made another set of chain and then I have come back through. I did, I do want to mention, you want to make sure these two are kind of in the same tension. Otherwise, like I had to do this twice because I did 45 here initially and then I did 45 here, but I guess there was a difference in tension or maybe my face is not as big as I thought because it was slightly loose. So I went back and undid them and I made 40 and then I came back and made 40 here um, before I went across down this row so that I, you know, that it was nice and snug fitting to my face. I came back down here and now I'm at the last stitches here. And this is where I started. This is my 40th stitch. I'm going to stitch it there. Whoop. Everybody's unraveling there. And then I'm going to slip stitch again, which is just pulling through both loops to neatly uh, end it. And then I'm going to leave about oh, two and a half inches of tail there. I'm going to pull, pull it out. And then what I like to do is I like to make a knot there. I can't do this. Sorry, guys, you might not be able to see it. So basically, all I'm doing as a knot is I'm making a four, number four, or like a triangle there. And then I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to try to make it as close as possible to my stitch. And then I'm going to take my darning needle, stitch it through, or get all my yarn. My first knot is not where it's supposed to be. And then I'm just going to weave it through a couple of stitches to make sure that it's in there securely and safely. And also it doesn't unravel. And then I'm going to just cut that off. And there you have it. Now I'm going to do a separate section to make the backing portion. It will be a quick tutorial if you do want to have a backing so that you can insert filters or whatever. Um, I'm going to make another separate one after this. So this is going to be about making of this backing here. I am going to fully disclose I do not sew. I took a sewing class last year which was really enjoyable and it led me to get a small mini sewing machine and I was I actually came across this tutorial trying to fix the tension on that small sewing machine and then getting frustrated and I just wanted to make a bloody mask so my sewing skill is very very limited but I was able to make this backing and it's stuck on pretty well so have faith that you can do it if you are not <laughs> a seamstress or any that's sewn anything in their lives all you're going to need is a small piece of fabric. This is a leftover from a pillow I made from that wonderful sewing class that I took last year. And, but it does need to be about four and a half to five inches tall and about six or seven inches wide. So uh, I would say 15 centimeters across and 12 centimeters um down this way having said that if it's not perfectly that size that is also okay as well I think this is a little bit shorter than 12 centimeters and well 15 didn't really matter but either way so you're going to cut that and the way you cut it I you just mark your places so six inches 
and 12 inches out. And once you cut it, I'm not going to do it because I already made two masks with the backing and I would like for this to be my winter mask, so I'm not going to do it. So the, the, the little piece that you make, if you look, I don't know if you can see here, but if you look, this area here, it's like a little bowl, it's indented, and that is kind of the area minus like an inch is the area that you kind of want to cover. So you're not covering the whole thing, but when you first cut out your piece, so it's 15 centimeters across, 12 centimeters down. This is about six, six inches, and this is about five inches across. What? So that is what you want to have. And I drew this exact same measurement on my fabric before I cut it and I am also somebody that very rarely uses scissors so you can use you know exacto knife to cut your fabric it will cut um, but what you want to do also is you want to fold in half and mark the half point and measure out a centimeter from the half point mark it and then about three millimeters or so you make another uh, marking and then draw a line across and then you'll have this triangle don't cut it out but this is going to be where your dark is and this is going to give that indent outwards when you have your fabric cut you're going to fold it up this way so this is where the pattern is so you fold if you have your fabric you're going to fold it in this way and let's just say this is where your triangle is you're going to sew the triangle and then once you sew the triangle you will have the indent marks and then you're going to fold the edges five about 0.5 millimeters fold it and then fold it again and then you're going to sew that and you're going to do it for all the edges now, I found the folding and sewing to be a little bit challenging after you make the dart. So what I did was I put some PVA glue to tack it down. You could also use Eileen's tacky glue or you can put tape on it to tack it down to help you fold it again. And then you're going to sew there. You're going to do the same thing all around. So you're going to fold twice. I think this is called hemming. I don't know. But you're going to do that all around the edge. And once you have that square, you're going to attach it to your mask. And that's it. And that is how you make your backing and lining. And if you have filters or what have you, you can exchange it. Um, for added protection but the lining is there and this is washable obviously and all I did was I did I think this is called a running stitch I went one way this once this way and then I came back this way which makes the top one there and voila you have your filter lineable mask thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoy the tutorials and I hope it helps you to make it was helpful if you have any questions, by all means, let me know in the comments or send me a message. And hopefully I will see you again in my next video.